you would laugh if you would know how many of the, especially small, saurian skeletons in your museums are totally wrong constructions of never existing beings because you used many bones which didn't really belong together and sometimes you made artificial bones if something was missing you needed to construct an animal saurian. Many of your scientists are aware of this problem, but they don't make it public, because they can't explain it and they claim, that the right bones were just missing and their reconstruction is right. Many bones of us were used for iguanodon reconstructions, for example the hands with the visible thumb. Look at an Iguanodon in a museum and you will see that I'm right. A scientist in the country you call United States had built an nearly correct skeleton of our kind some years ago, but the local government, which is partly aware of our existence, confiscated the reconstruction. As we live today, and since thousands of years, nearly completely beneath the earth, you will not find any cadavers or skeletons of us. Question. You speak sometimes about underground cities and artificial sunlight. Do you mean something like a hollow earth with this? Is there a second sun inside our planet? Answer, no, earth is not really completely hollow and there is no second sun inside. This story is ridiculous and physically not possible, even your species should be intelligent enough not to believe this. Do you know how much mass a sun must have to produce energy and light for a longer time by fusion? Do you really think that there could be a small active sun inside the planet? When I talk about our subterranean home, I talk about large cave systems. The caves you have discovered near to the surface are tiny in comparison to real caves and huge caverns deeper in the earth, in a depth of 2000 to 8000 of your meters but connected with many hidden tunnels to the surface or to surface near caves, and we live in large and advanced cities and colonies inside such caves. Major sites of us are beyond the Arctic, the Antarctic, Inner Asia, North America and Australia. If I talk about artificial sunlight in our cities I don't mean a real sun but various technological sources of light, including gravitational sources, which illuminates the caverns and tunnels. There are special cave areas and tunnels with a strong UV light in every city and we use that places to heat our blood. Furthermore, we have also some surface sun places in remote areas, especially in America and Australia. Question, where can we find such a surface near entry to your world? Answer, do you really think I will tell you their exact location? If you want to find such an entry, you have to search it by yourself. But I would advise you not to do that, when I came to the surface four days ago, I used an entry approximately 300 of your kilometers north from here near to a large lake, but I doubt that you would be able to find it, there are only a few entries in this part of the world, more are far more north and east, as a little advice, if you are in a narrow cave or in a tunnel or even in something that looks to you like an artificial mine shaft and as deeper you walk as smoother up near the walls and if you feel unusual warm air streaming from the depth or if you hear the rushing sound of streaming air in a ventilation or elevator shaft, then look for a special kind of artificial and smooth wall somewhere in the cave with a door made of grey metal. If you would be able to open the door, but I doubt this. You would be in a usually round technical room with ventilation systems and elevators to the depth. This is probably an entry to our world. If you have reached this point, you should know that we are now definitely aware of your presence. You are already in big trouble if you have entered the round room, but you should look for one of the two reptilian symbols on the walls. If there are no symbols or other symbols, you are maybe in bigger trouble as you think because not every underground installation belongs to our kind. Some new tunnel systems are operated from alien races, including hostile races. My general advice if you find yourself in a, for you, strange underground installation, run away as fast as you can. Question, you mentioned earlier that you use the name last when you are among humans and that you enjoy it to be in the real sun on the surface of earth. But how can you be among humans? You don't look like us, so anyone will see that you belong to another species. Why have nobody seen and described a being like you if your kind lives already since our creation together with us on the same planet? Can you explain that to me? Answer, first, 
my kind was of course seen and described, and worshipped, many times in your primitive past, for example in your religious writings like your Christian Bible. You can find descriptions and even then they left earth again for some thousands of years and the primitive pre-humans lived together with us without major problems. They were just afraid of our aircraft and technology. The Elogium had taught their mind and enhanced their brain and their body structure and they were now able to use tools and fire. The Elogium returned within 23,000 years seven times and accelerated the evolution speed of certain of your kind. You must understand that you are not the first human civilization on the planet. The first advanced humans, who lived at the same time with less developed pre-humans, because the Elogium had experimented with different speeds and stages of evolution, with technology and speech existed around 700,000 years ago on this planet, your scientists have not understand this because they've found only the bones of the pre-humans and some primitive cave drawings showing advanced humans and flying devices, this genetically advanced human breed lived together with us, but they avoided contact with my kind, because the Elogium teachers had warned them with misleading purpose that we are evil beings and that we lie to them. Well, after some centuries the aliens decided to extinct their first creation and they accelerated the evolution of a second and better test series and so on and so on. The truth is that your modern human civilization is not the first on this planet earth but already the seventh. The buildings of the first breeds are lost, but the fifth civilization was the one, which built the large triangular constructions you call Egyptian pyramids today around 75,000 years ago. Your Egyptians just found that large ancient pyramids in the sand and tried not very successful to build similar constructions, and the sixth civilization was the one, which built the cities which ruins you can find today beneath the sea in the so-called Baimanai area around 16,000 years ago. The last creation of the seventh breed, of your series, was done just 8,500 years ago and this is the only creation you can remember and to which your religious writings refer. You rely on archaeological and paleontological artifacts which show you a wrong and short past, but how should you know anything about the six civilizations before? And if you find evidence for their existence, you deny and misinterpret the facts. This is partly a programming of your mind and partly pure ignorance. I will tell you in the following only about your creations, because the six previous mankinds are lost and therefore they should not concern you. There was a long war between us and the Elogium and also between certain groups of the Elogium themselves, because many of them were the opinion that the again and again creation of human species on this planet makes no real sense. The last battles in this war were fought around 5000 years ago in orbit and surface. The aliens used powerful sonic weapons to destroy our underground cities but on the other hand we were able to destroy many of their surface installations and bases in space. The humans of your series were very frightened when they observed our battles and they wrote it down in form of religious myths, their mind was not able to understand what was really going on. The Elogium, who appeared as gods for the sixth and seventh breed told them that it is a war between good and evil and that they are the good and we are the evil race. This depends certainly on the point of view. It was our planet before they arrived and before they started their evolution project with your kind. In my opinion, it was our right to fight for our planet. It was exactly 4,943 years ago, according to your time scale, that the Elogium left the planet again for unknown reasons. This is a very important date for us, because many of our historians called it a victory, fact is that we don't know what had really happened. The Elogium were gone from one day to another, they vanished without a trace together with their ships and we found most of their surface installations destroyed by them. The humans were on their own and your civilization developed. Many of us were in contact with certain, more southern tribes of your species in the coming centuries and we were able to convince some of them that we are not the evil the aliens wanted them to believe. During the time from 4,900 years ago to today, many other alien species arrived at the planet, some of them used the old teaching and programming of your mind and played again God for you, but the Elogium themselves never came back.
they had left the planet for a duration of some thousand years or so earlier, so we expect their return one day in future to end their project or to maybe extinct also the seventh breed, but we don't really know what have happened to them, to answer this question of you in advance. Your current civilization doesn't know anything about your real origin. I think they will not attack the planet directly before the human civilization is weak, because even you have possibilities to destroy their craft, but not many, let me say, that we are not absolutely sure if there will be really such a hot war already in the next years. I don't want to talk further about this. Question, this is the end of the interview. Do you want to say a last sentence or message? Answer, open your eyes and see. Don't believe only in your wrong history or your scientists or your politicians. Some of them know the truth about various things, but they don't inform the public to avoid confusion and panic. I think your species is not as bad as some of my kind thinks and it would be a pity to observe your end. That's everything I can say. Go through your world with open eyes and you will see, or maybe not. Your kind is ignorant. Question. Do you think anyone will believe that this interview is the truth? Answer, no, but it is an interesting experiment for my social studies. We will meet again in some months and you will tell me then what have happened after the publication of my message. Maybe there is hope for your kind. All rights reserved copyright, the last of file 2, translation by Doug Parrish. Taken from http colon slash slash www.sabin.org slash reptiloid slash index 4.html. Introduction I once again reaffirm that the following text is the absolute truth and is not fiction. It was composed from three original tape recordings which were made on April 24, 2000 with a tape recorder during my second interview with the reptilian creature known as Lastia. At Lastia's request, the original text of 31 pages was revised and shortened up to deal with some questions and answers. Some existing questions were partially shortened or amended. It was even undertaken to extract message and significance from it. This part of the interview, either not mentioned or not mentioned completely in the transcript, deals primarily with personal issues, paranormal demonstrations, the social system of the reptilian species and alien technology and physics. The reason for the shifting of the date and time of the second meeting was a possible observation and surveillance of my own person after the publication of the first transcript. Although everything was attempted on the advice of Lasty to keep my identity a secret, just two days after the dissemination of the document abroad, and various unusual events took place. Please don't think that I am paranoid, however, I believe that the publication of the interview has drawn either official attention or the attention of some organization to me. Up until this time, I usually regarded people who believed that they were being followed by the state to be nothing more than jokers. But now I have begun to revise my ideas on that since events in January. It began with a failure of my telephone for several hours. When the phone became operational once again, there were quiet echoes and strange clicking and whirring sounds when I made calls. A defect could, ostensibly, not be found anywhere. Overnight, important data disappeared from the hard drive in my computer. The testing program reported defective sectors where strangely enough there were only data which dealt with illustrations and completed textual material from the interview. These defective sectors also contained material of a paranormal nature in the field of my research. Fortunately, the material was also stored on floppies, in addition I discovered by pure chance some hidden data in a likewise hidden directory index. The name which appeared on the data and the directory index was e 72 urge A friend, who is a computer expert, could not make anything of this designation, and when I was about to show it to him, the directory index had disappeared. One evening, my apartment door was standing wide open, my TV set was running and I am absolutely confident that I had turned the TV set off. A minivan with British markings and the imprint of a Europe-wide supermarket chain parked in front of my house. I noticed the same minivan again on several occasions traveling at a distance behind my car, even when I visited the town of 65 kilometers away. 
When I returned, the car was on the other side of the street once again. I never saw anyone get into or out of the car. A knock on the door of the vehicle and on the tinted windows caused no reaction of any kind. After about two weeks, the minivan disappeared again. When I informed DF personally about these events, he suggested that I change the place and date of the meeting in order to assure our own and Lester's safety. The meeting took place on April 27, 2000.